welcome to Radical Faith today. It's so good to broadcast all the way from Jamaica today. And of course, Radical Faith today is a ministry that is geared towards developing, nurturing, and reviving radical faith in God in these last days. All right, so to start things off, we are going to bow our heads for a word of prayer. And then Joshua is going to sing a hymn, my son. So, Brother Noel, over to you. Good morning, everyone. Let us pray. Loving Lord and our Savior, we recognize thee as the superintendent of the universe, creator of heaven and earth, king of kings and lord of lords. As we pause in your presence, Lord, we beg you to come divine the name, to cleanse us of all our sins, to reshape our thought process, to resemble that of Jesus. Implant your Holy Spirit, blessed Father, in our hearts, and may you be the one that will manage the proceedings today. We shape our thoughts so that Lord our words will also reflect the thoughts that are planted by the Holy Spirit. Bless this gathering, Lord, and may all that is done today serve for the furtherance of your cause and earth, and indeed the sealing of our destinies for heaven is our asking in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you. All right, Joshua is going to sing for us this morning, and then we are going to get into our introductions. And then Brother Wazar is going to join us later on. Yes, which song are you going to sing? Number 528, A Shelter in the Time of Storm. All right, he's going to sing 528, A Shelter in the Time of Storm. Okay. All right. You want to start? Uh-huh. All right, let's go. Three, two, one. The Lord our often we are a shelter in the time of storm. Whatever may be tied, a shelter in the time of storm. Mighty rock, mighty rock, in a weary world, pointing faith on the burning sand. Faithful, faithful God, who fulfills his faith, a shelter in the time of storm. For faith by day, defense by night, a shelter in the time of storm. No fears alone, no foes of right, a shelter in the time of storm. Mighty rock, mighty rock, in a weary land, cooling, cooling shade on the burning set. Faithful, faithful guy for the pilgrim's bed, a shelter in the time of storm. The raging floods may round us be, a shelter in the time of storm. We find in God a safe retreat. A shelter in the time of storm, mighty rock, mighty rock, in a weary land, cooling, cooling shade on the burning sand. Faithful, faithful God, for the pilgrim's band, a shelter in the time of storm. A rock divine, a refuge dear, a shelter in the time of storm. Be thou our help forever near, a 
our shelter in the time of storm. Mighty rock, mighty rock, in a weary land, cooling, cooling shade, under burning sand, faithful, faithful God, for the pilgrim sent a shelter in the time of storm. All right, thank you so much, Joshua. And as we begin, we're going to ask each person who is able to go ahead and introduce themselves. So Antonio, and then Brother Wazari, and then Brother Noel. And if Brother Paul is on, I will go in that order. Sure. <clears throat> Should I say good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are? I am I'm Antonio Bernard. I'm also a Jamaican. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Wilson. I'm a director of Steps of Light Ministries. Uh, we are a ministry based in the island of Jamaica. Good morning, everyone. I am Noel Terrier. I'm the managing director of Temple Foods, and the Temple Foods processes healthy foods for the Jamaican and international uh, market, health market. And we also are engaged in health promotion, health education, and the development of the use where you have smartphone application. Thank you. Brother Paul, are you able to, to introduce yourself? All right, so we're not hearing Brother Paul at the moment, but um, later on, uh, hopefully he will be able to rejoin us. All right, so the segment first, we are going to be, our title rather is Calling All Jamaicans to Use What You Have. And we're gonna invite Brother Noel in a little while to tell us what is this phone, um, this cell phone application, use what you have. Of course, it's a Jamaican terminology, and I myself, being a Jamaican, I understand totally what this means in English, but maybe some others might be watching and they do not understand even what does use what you have mean in English and what this ministry is all about. So and in this segment, we are going to ask Brother Noel to tell us a little bit more to share with us what is the use where you have all about? And then we're going to go to Brother Wazari to tell us about his ministry and Brother Antonio and Brother Paul, if he's able at that time to join. So over now to you, Brother Noel. Thank you so much, Gabriel. And um, I just want to say good morning to everyone in cyberspace. The concept of use what you have, and it's really a Jamaican terminology that means use what you have to utilize the resources that are closest to hand. And today what I want to do is to set a theological foundation to the concept of use what you have smartphone application. A proper uh, introduction to the actual smartphone app is also found on our YouTube page. And we will also send that link later on for those who want to get an understanding, the in-depth understanding of its mechanisms and methods, etc. But this morning, I really want to set first and foremost that theological foundation, that concept that is born out of Christ. The, this concept is based on two experiences from the Exodus experience. And um, the first is found in Exodus chapter 4 and verse 2, when God gave Moses that charge to rescue his people, and Moses apparently attempted to find the excuse to do it, 
But God asked him that question. And the Lord said unto him, what is that in thine hand? And he said, a rod. And of course, the experience went on where God uh, in, in instruct him as to how he was to effectively utilize this instrument that is found in his hand. The, what we can take away from that is that God can use any tool as long as it is consecrated to bring liberation to his people. God used a rod back then. Today, he asks the church, what do you have in your hand? The answer for many, a cell phone. Today, God bids us use what you have and build out an economic and social infrastructure for the Seventh-day Adventist Church. From this, we can also gather that there is no detail that misses our God. God has power to use everything that is meant for our destruction and to transform it and use it for our construction. God has enough foresight. Theology calls it omniscience to prepare his people for what is to come. The second principle undergirding this smartphone application is found in Exodus 35. Here, God instructed Moses on the methodology for building a church in the wilderness. And so in Exodus 35 and verse five, there are two important texts that we will, we will take from this passage. The first is verse five that says, take ye from among you an offering unto the Lord, whosoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it an offering of the Lord, gold and silver and brass. But I want us to take from this passage a phrase at the beginning of the passage. I want you to underline it in your mind and if you want to do it in your Bible, take ye from among you. So the concept of use where you have is also born for it in this passage. Take ye from among you. It means that God's people, as all the wherewithal, or the capacity, or the capability among them to create a space for their own survival in whatever territory or whichever environment the enemy places them in. The psalmist says, and I am quoting from Psalm 78, 19 and 20. Yea, they speak against God. They said, can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Behold, he smote the rock that the waters gushed out and the streams overflowed. Can he give bread also? Can he provide flesh for his people? And I want to say resoundingly, our God can. So the underlying principle of use where of is based on the all sufficiency of God. It is the fact that God has equipped the human capital existing today as his church with everything necessary for its survival in its exodus from sin through this earthly wilderness experience on our journey to the heavenly Canaan. God's church needs nothing but God to survive because man shall not live by bread alone, but as he said, by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. God's people shouldn't be in the position to be forced by their government to eat from the forbidden tree in the midst of the garden for, their, for there are millions of trees and plants whose therapeutic and economic potential will take them a lifetime to fully exploit. 
use what you have is built on a concept that God has sufficiently equipped his church with so much gifts that we needn't rely on our modern day Babylon of USA or China or Europe to exist, but we are sufficiently equipped in our wilderness. We, the people of God, have a God-built bubble called the sanctuary or the church in which to survive. Just as the children of Israel existing as just liberated slaves, but they didn't need a trading partner. All they needed to build that sanctuary in the wilderness was God, the presence of God who positioned himself as a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. That's all they needed. And so one would ask, one would actually say, and the scientific mind would question, how could a group of persons, two million strong, survive in a wilderness, which is a desert, nothing grows there. There is just hot air and sand. How could they survive for 40 years? But it was to show the resourcefulness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so God ascribed them to pool their individual resources. This is the concept of use where you have, to pool our individual resources. And so these two million slaves who were enslaved for some 400 years were able to pool their resources and gather some 2,193 2 pounds of gold, 7,544 pounds of silver, estimated value today of 57 million US dollars. And that is not counting the brass. That's not counting the other uh, 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 implements and, and, and wares that were utilized in the building of the sanctuary. And so God's modern day church can exist outside of government mandates and, lockdown, and, and lockdowns. I want to tell God's people today, COVID is not a threat to God's people. It is God's inspired idea to use Satan's own machinations, machinations meant for the church and to turn it against him by making God's people look mortal and depend more upon their God. The 40 years in the wilderness was not a death sentence put on God's people. It was a separating of faith from works. It was a time where God could sift and separate the holy from the profane. And most importantly, it was a time and place where God could equip and empower his people without distractions. And so my brothers and sisters, this is a time in which we need to pivot towards God. Because in God, he is our sufficiency, he is our all in all. And we need to make that relevant and meaningful in our lives as Christians. How do we sell the gospel? How do we promote the concept of the gospel amongst a, a sight and sound generation if we cannot show them that listen, in trusting in God, God can use technology. God can manifest himself to the things that are available around us so that his people can be equipped and so that his cause can be supported on this earth. The impending wilderness experience of God's church, and let us understand, God is going to take his church to another wilderness experience. But this impending wilderness experience of God's church must not be viewed negatively. You know, there are many persons who have fear and trepidation of the future, but we need to understand that our future is in the hand of God. And so the book of Revelation tells us that the woman, though driven 
and banished into the wilderness by Satan, somehow achieved the nourishment for our future expansion from the very environment that were meant for her destruction. So says Revelation chapter 12 at verse 6. And the woman, the Bible said, fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared of God. There is no place that Satan can send us, my brothers and sisters, that God cannot prepare it better for us. That they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. That's the God that we serve. This is the, the principle behind you is where I have that God is able to feed his people. God is able to protect his people during COVID. That they should feed her. For how long? For this length of time. The wilderness then was a time and a school to equip a group of slaves to build a superpower on the merits of their God, where their faith becomes their financial instrument and love to God and their brethren becomes their bank, a place where the word of God is mined and minted for survival skills. The impending crisis will force God's people to turn the pages of the Bible and look to God rather than Google to find examples of survival skills. God's people have nothing to fear from COVID. COVID is the penultimate catalyst to catapult God's people into heaven. The juxtaposition of COVID and its appearance during the anti-typical Day of Atonement means that God is using it as an important and effective instrument in the investigative judgment of his people so that we can be prepared for the coming of the Son of Man in the clouds of heaven. P.G. White writes, the proclamation of the judgment is an announcement of Christ's second coming, that it is at hand. And consequently, preaching the soon return of Christ is shown to be an essential part of the gospel message. She continued, the announcement that the hour of judgment has come refers to Christ's ministration in the most holy place to the investigative judgment that takes place before his glorious return. And we find that in Daniel chapter seven, um, nine to 10, Daniel chapter uh, seven, 13 through to 14. She continued, it is the anti-typical day of atonement when the cleansing of the people reached its consummation. While the investigative judgment is going forward in heaven, while the sins of penitent believers are being removed from the sanctuary, there is supposed to be a special work of purification of the putting away of sin amongst God's people upon earth. This work, is more clearly presented in the messages of Revelation 14. And so she said, sin, we are understanding from this, that sin is removed by accepting the atoning death of Christ for us and by embracing the sanctifying power of the messages of the three angels in preparation for the coming of the Lord. My friends, it is only as sin is removed that we are able to see in greater clarity the benefits gained from a relationship with Jesus. The song says, the closer I get, the more I see the glory of the soon coming King. This is the moment, my friends, when God is using trials as a means to better acquaint and enjoy the company of Jesus Christ. My friends, heaven is not designed for the fearful and unbelieving. 
heaven is designed for the loving. Where people do not love God because they fear the devil and fear hell, but God wants a people who love in spite of, and they have come to the realization that their existence no. is built on love. It's a realization. That I cannot exist without acknowledging God and loving God in response. And that this expression of love is the closer I get oh. to God is the more treasures I discover existing around me that are the raw materials uh, in Thomas which Frank. I can survive on. My friends, in God's presence, perishable manna, an item of food that could not be kept beyond 24 hours, could be preserved for 40 years and beyond. In the presence of God, Aaron's rod could grow without physical water and nutrients and support. When God's people come in the presence of God, a river could flow from a desert. Gold, silver, and brass worth billions could be mined and fashioned, not from the mines of earth, but from the mines of slaves educated by the word of God. This is the power of use what you have. This is the power of God. So yes, use what you have is a dependence on God. It is coming into the presence of God and recognizing what God is worth to the believer. And so my brothers and sisters, we are on the cusp of another great reawakening where God wants to create a new thing from the hold. God's church, meaning all of us today, we are all on an exodus. Sin has been our slave master. Life on earth has been our wilderness, but the ultimate, the ultimate destiny is our heavenly Canaan. I want to encapsulate the conclusion in this way. Exodus chapter 35 and verse 30. The Bible said this, and Moses said unto the children of Israel, see the Lord, as called by name, Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Ur of the tribe of Judah. And he had put in his heart that he may teach both he and Eholiab, the son of Ahishamash of the tribe of Dan, them had he filled with wisdom of art to work all manner of work. Now, how do I interpret this for a sight and sound generation? I would want to rephrase this text and put it in my words to say, I have called Noel by name of the tribe of Terrier, that he might put in his heart to teach both he and Paul of the tribe of Riley and Gabriel and Wazari and Antonio, them had he filled with wisdom of art to create all manner of work for the people of the Lord. So as they build out the temple of the Lord for his soon return. My friends, there is no limit to man's potential when he merges his humanity with God's divinity. And so what is used where you have? It's a smartphone application. It's an empowerment tool for Seventh-day Adventists where we use technology to discover, document, and pull the human resource potential of God's people. Where at the top of your smartphone, you can know who is within your church, who is so equipped to provide goods or services that would normally be sourced from outside. And so a framework of trading is created amongst ourselves. A very important spin-off of the mark of the beast, my friends, when we read of the mark of the beast in, in, in Revelation, 
is that buying and selling restrictions, though imposed by those outside and left they have a mark, did not restrict those on the inside of God's church. The Lord simply gave an instruction that we should avoid that mark. But God did not tell us that we would not survive. And this is something we need to look at. Because we have the seal of God. We have been sealed by God. And the fact that we are sealed by God means that we are in the presence of God. So we don't need to trade with outside. We don't need to trade with Babylon. For God is our keeper. All right? And so the scripture tells us in uh, Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 13 to 15. Thou camest down also upon Mount Sinai, and spakest with them from heaven, and gavest them right judgments, and true laws, good statutes, and commandments, and madest known unto them thy holy Sabbath, and commandest them precepts, statutes, and laws by the hand of Moses thy servant, and gave us them bread from heaven for their hunger, and brought us forth water for them out of the rock for their thirst, and promised us them that they should go in to possess the land which thou art sworn to give them. The takeaway from this passage, in a very cruel and hostile environment, God carved out an ecosystem for his people so they may effectively prepare themselves and others for the heavenly Canaan. My friends, Israel had no trading partners while in the wilderness, but nevertheless, they subsisted and flourished trading what they had amongst themselves. That's the use why you have concept. And so the Exodus experience shows how God can use the spiritual giftedness of his people in not just building out the worship experience, but what I call their worship experience. And I'm going to explain that. You see, the second undergrading philosophy that use where you have is built on is that of the Sabbath command, which clearly and categorically states, six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. For some reasons, brothers and sisters, we have spent a millennia understanding the Sabbath, but for some reason it has bypassed us, it has eclipsed our understanding that a very important part of the Sabbath command involves work. The truth is we are not fully understanding, interpreting and applying the Sabbath command unless we include our jobs, unless we include our work. The Sabbath was meant to give God's people independence. And it's not just independent worship, it is independent worship. It is independence in our job. And that's why I'm saying that COVID has been used by God to separate and sift God's church so that we will look to God for work. We look to God for jobs. And so there's no better time than now for you where you have to come in as we go on. Now, what this tells me is that if you're a Sabbath keeper, you have a divine mandate to create work for yourself and your families. You have a divine mandate, and I'm, I'm, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm making this very clear. As long as you're a Sabbath keeper, there is no excuse to find work, to create work, because God has gifted us as a people for that. The fact that we are called to observe the Sabbath is a call to find work for six days. Because why? A source of income is the result of a relationship that we have with Christ. This is the reality, this is practical Christianity. 
This is the gospel in verity. Once you've established a relationship with the creator, the creator should be able to make his people creative. If the creator is creative, then the creature is also creative. And if the creature merges his intellect with the creator on the seventh day, then it becomes automatic that the creature becomes creative like his creator for the next six days. The Sabbath, fully understood, is the antidote for unemployment in God's church. The fourth commandment, fully understood and applied, means that the word unemployment and mandatory vaccinations are erased from the Seventh-day Adventist vocabulary. When we are an independent territory of Israel, Babylon's coercion is nullified against God's people. Government's mandate to vaccinate is God's mandate for the people of God to create an economy for themselves and to truly articulate the Sabbath command. The use where you have up equips God's people to collaborate by firstly acting as a quasi information platform, much like Google, but targeted to Seventh day Adventist. The second pillar that use where you have is built on is the documenting of the planned resources that our people have at their disposal. So the first pillar is built on doing what? Finding out what are the skill set of our people and knowing where we can access these skill sets. That's the first plank of use where you have. But the second part of it has to do with the documenting of the plant resources of our people so that they can be quantified and pooled for both their economic as well as their therapeutic benefits. So for instance, if I, as a process of castor oil, needs in Jamaica a thousand pounds of seed per week to trade in the international market in the Seventh day Adventist diaspora, I will be able to use, use what you have, to know who amongst my brothers and sisters who have from a pound to 100 pound of castor seeds. If I need to plan a church building project, I will not need to organize a bake sale or a concert, but I will be able to find the ingredient to package my smoothies, to create healthy smoothies, for instance, to sell these smoothies to the church so that what? The, 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 the profit from this can be used in building out my church. The theological foundation for this segment of this application is found in Genesis chapter six. Genesis 6 and verse 22, 21 and 22 says, thou shalt take unto thee, and this was God speaking to Noah. And I wanted to understand that God always prepare his people for every incoming crisis. God's church has been prepared for 150 years for COVID. There's no reason for us to be running all over the place like chickens that have lost their heads because of COVID when God has sent us an net message. So now we're amplifying the net message this morning. How do we do that? We're looking back at Noah, at how God instructed Noah to refit the ark for the flood. And God is now preparing the heart of God for the fires to make it fireproof. So look at what God is saying to Noah and let us learn from it. And take thou unto thee of all food that is eaten and thou shalt gather it to thee, and it shall be for food for thee and for them. We understand what God is trying to do now by using news where you have, gathering the food for God's people to prepare the hurt for the fires of God's wrath. Thus did Noah, according to all that God commanded, so did he. Now that's Genesis. Let's look at Revelation. In Revelation chapter 9 and verse 4, the Bible said, And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth. I wonder if we understand what God is trying to say to God's people this morning. I feel like preaching this morning. Let me tell you something. He says, God said 
it was commanded them, the angels that came to do the destructive act. Do not hurt the grass of the earth. That means the cereal grains. Neither any green thing. God wasn't talking about the chickens, no. <laughs> he was not talking about the goats. He was not talking about the fish. God began to preach and to speak to his people. He says, listen to me. At that time, COVID or no COVID, when I send out my angels, I will send a protective armor to protect the food resources of God's church. I will protect it. He said, do not hurt the grass, neither any green thing, neither any tree. Have mercy. That's the health methods, brothers and sisters, in verity. But only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. I want to leave us with some reassurance this morning that God is in control. He's in control of his church. He's in control of his people. And why I know that God is in control is when he has assembled a team like yours, a team like us this morning to explore this initiative and to bring it to fruition. And so, brothers and sisters, God protects the source of our food and medicine. And God is calling us today to that. Lastly, the third component of use what you have. And I want to tell you it's a very comprehensive application that touches every aspect of the church and God's people. It was an idea born in heaven. All that we have done is to allow ourselves to be used by the Holy Spirit. It didn't come from us. This is a God-born idea. But the third important aspect of use we have is the combining of the skill set of God's people with the plant resources that God's people have and creating what we call an idea bank. This is where God's people puts their own YouTube together. So everyone was being thrown out of a job because of COVID and because of mandatory vaccination and because of our, 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 our resoluteness in not allowing poisons to interfere with our connection with heaven, then God is going to create that economy amongst us where we can go and use what you have platform and it will teach us how to use the sugar cane that we have in our backyard and create a source of revenue. It will teach us how to use the herbs that Gabrielle has in her backyard and how she can stay right there in her backyard and create a source of revenue for herself and her family. It will show the church what Portland and St. Mary and other parts of Jamaica has that we have over one third of the world's medicinal plant growing in our backyards. And Elder Riley will confirm this fact. And so it will show us how to look down and look up. We will look at the plants that we have around us and we will look at them with a renewed understanding that within these plants are the elements of our survival through the power and blood of Jesus Christ. I thank you very much. All right. Thank you so much, Brother Terrier. That was just so much information all packed in there. But, you know, I like the word that you use, workmanship, because God gave us six days to labor and one day to rest. And rest is a part of reviving, you know, and just having that Sabbath day to develop our connection, our personal relationship with the Lord, which will help us to stand in these last days. And I like how you say that we can learn these things to provide a source of income. And, you know, Brother Noel, as I was just recently just thinking on our Seventh-day Adventist churches and I just think of my grandmother who lives here in Jamaica and she has a lot of land. And a thought just came to me, what happened to the Seventh-day Adventist churches in her area? She has land, but she, ha she hasn't, 
she doesn't know what to do with it. And there, her grandson is living with her, which is in his 30s. And, you know, he just recently returned from Canada. And I was like, if our Adventist churches could just get up and start in your community, you don't have to take a plane to fly to, to um, USA or fly to Philippines or Australia, but right in your community, there Amen. is work to be done. Amen. And my, the desire of my heart is that God will start touching our Seventh-day Adventist churches to start working in your community. And if Amen. every church does this, then we will be providing a source of revenue for not only people of our faith, but also other people. So thank you so much, Amen. Brother Noel, for sharing that with us. And now we're going to go to Brother Wazari to tell us a little bit about his ministry. We are having some a little bit dif uh, technical difficulty with his video coming on, but we know that God is able to still work when technology fails. He's even the God of technology. Amen. So continue to pray so that um, Brother Wazari can share right now. Amen. Good morning, all. Good morning again. Um, I am a member, a director of Steps to Light Ministries. And Steps to Light Ministries was raised up to basically mimic Christ in the preaching of the gospel, in that Christ preached a spoken word, he taught, but he also was a medical missionary and he believed in the social aspects of man. So we, our aim is to go forward with a total gospel plan. Um, while I would never diminish the spoken word's importance, I notice a deficit in our country in terms of the medical missionary work and the social aspects of the work. Um, it, 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 it creates difficulty when we carry the gospel, the spoken word, and person's economic stance is not altered. And we have no solution in regards to the health and welfare of our brethren and the wider society. Um, it impacts the gospel negatively because the gospel was never intended to go forward incomplete. You know, so um, we have had a burden on our heart to create a ministry that is concerned about all of these aspects of man's life. Uh, so that is the purpose of um, Steps to Light Ministry, to carry the gospel in a holistic way. Uh, I was really pleased uh, when I heard Brother Terrier um, I am very thankful that this opportunity came up this morning because I never knew that others were out there in Jamaica with this passion for the industries that, 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 that need to be raised up in Jamaica. Um, Brother Antonio is well acquainted with me. Of all the persons here today, Antonio knows me the best. And he can attest to the fact that I have the industrial work as, as a great burden on my heart, especially in these closing scenes of Earth's history. When we look at the order of the sanctuary, I won't go into all of the, 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 the tribes and so on, but I made notice once when I was doing a study on the sanctuary, the orders of the tribe, according to where they are located, north, south, east, and west. You know, And when I took notice of it, I saw that the Issachar tribe, the tribe of Judah, and the tribe of Zebulun was on the eastward side. Um, the Bible talks about tidings out of the east, troubling the king of the north. And when you look at the order in history, you, it actually reflects the order of the tribe. And the outer perimeter of the east is Issachar. And when we look at the order of the development of the Seventh-day Adventist church, the Issacharians reflect the pattern of the Millerite movement because the Issacharians were known as men who could discern the times so that Israel would know what to do. You know, well, Judah, sorry, was on the uttermost outer perimeter. I correct myself. And Judah, we know, is the, is the, is the tribe where Christ comes forth from. And the, 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 the head of our faith, Christ Jesus, actually came and did a work to start a ministration in the heavenly sanctuary, you know, moving from the courtyard into the holy place. And then as we transitioned into the most holy place, the tribe of Issachar 
came up around the period of the Miller rights. I believe William Miller would have been an Issacharian because William Miller knew the times. He studied the times so that Israel would know what to do, how to prepare themselves and so on. But the closing tribe on the east, the one that is closest to the east gate of the sanctuary, as you look at the order of the tribes, is the tribe of Zebulun. And I, when I started to research the importance of the tribe of Zebulun, I realized that the tribe of Zebulun concerned itself with economics and trade and industry. They were the merchant tribe of Israel. And when you look at the crisis that is before us, it is not only a religious crisis, it is an economic crisis. It is a crisis that concerns itself with trade. So that means God's people to fight a religious economic war must have religious economic measures put in place to meet such a war, you know, because that is the final crisis. The mark of the beast crisis is a religious economic crisis. And I've seen for two decades being a Seventh-day Adventist where we are behind in our preparation to meet a religious economic crisis. And I honestly praise God when I was hearing the things coming out of Brother Terry's mouth because it is clear to me that God is moving upon the minds of others to see the importance of not only sharing the gospel in word, but the need for an economic plan to meet such a crisis that is soon to be upon us. We see the framework. We see the, we see the armies of Cestius gathering around in this COVID crisis. We see a dress rehearsal of how measures can be changed overnight to work against God's people who are conscientious. We see the realities how economic um, restrictions can easily be placed on us because for, for, for a number of years, I believe Seventh-day Adventists have been losing their confidence in our eschatological stance on how the mark of the beast will actually occur. You know, I think we were drifting away from our prophetic stance, our historic stance, but now we see a dress rehearsal of how this can actually happen in a real way, in a real and pragmatic sense. We are seeing a demonstration of it. And when we see the armies of Cestius gathering, we know that Titus is, is, is close to, to, to take his, his, his steps toward just completing what Cestius has started. So we have to be preparing in a real sense to meet this economic um, warfare that is on its way. And I am so happy that God has moved upon uh, Brother Terry and Brother Riley to, to work together, to collaborate, to create this use where you have up. And I was excited to hear um, Brother Terry speak about having our own platforms. You know, I have often heard our people complain and send WhatsApp messages about how YouTube is planning to get rid of videos and WhatsApp is planning to restrict us and Facebook is, is, is planning to restrict us. One thing that stands up out of the discourse from Brother Terrier is that he, 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 he practically pointed to a reality that God for over 40 years actually sustained his people without them needing trade from others. He sustained them. God actually sustained them and they, they, they actually survived without the need to trade with others. And, and, and this is a reality. And if he could do it then, he is more than capable to do it now. And I think we have really treated the scriptures almost like a storybook where we look at these accounts and we, we marvel at it and say, wow, this would have been good to see and so on. But the God of the Old Testament is the God of the New. God is the God of present day. And sometimes we make the mistake of saying the things that God has done in Bible times or in the Bible days. But revelation has not yet come to a close. So we are living in Bible days. We are living in the present tense of Bible days. And God is still doing what he did back then. Sometimes we are not seeing evidence of God's glory and power because of our own unbelief in God's glory and power. But we have to get to the place where we know that God is still capable of doing what he did back then. He's still capable of parting seas. He's still capable of parting rivers. 
He's still capable of providing food resources out of nowhere on earth. He's still capable of making water into wine. He's still capable of providing water where there is no underground water table because he is still God. And I was happy to hear what Brother Terry took to the to the to the fore, you know. I, I don't think I can even add anything much but my excitement to what I heard, you know, because um I I really look forward to steps like collaborating with Brother Terry and all of you guys. Um we already work together with Antonio. Antonio is actually a member of Steps to Light, you know, but he also ministers in other ways and with others as well. But, you know, that is basically what we are about. You know, by trade, I am a ceramist. I make ceramic items. You know, um, recently I developed this health product that we have been using, um, which is a pretty much simple product. It is a scented oil burner. And we use these scented oil burners. It's made from ceramic material. And it is used often with essential oils. A simple device. You don't need um, electricity. You know, um, it is used just like a diffuser. But unlike the electric diffuser, all you need is a is a tea candle. So whether light is out, whether you are living in the country far away from an electric electrical outlet or any form of electric source, you can still use the burner. You know, uh, recently we learned that. Um, Clove oil is a good oil to be used, an essential oil to be used in the war against COVID-19, the COVID-19 virus. And, you know, this item can be used to, to, to address, um, you know, your deep inhalation using the clove oil or the eucalyptus oil. So um, gradually God is giving me ideas how to use my ability to make ceramic items, to make storage jars for herbs and Recently, a sister sent me a design as to how to make a ceramic refrigerator that insulates itself so that items can be kept cool for a long period of time without the use of electricity, just using regular water. And as we are going into a time of economic um, restraint and no buy no sell time period, um, your, your utilities will be impacted as well. So I believe that God is allowing these ideas to come my way so that we can still live comfortable lives as the onslaught of economic restrictions are tabled against us. And I am truly excited to hear that there are others with the same mindset, the same mindset of self-sustenance. Um, I won't use the word self-reliance because I'm not relying on myself, I'm relying on God. But this idea of, of, of God sustaining his people and God's people learning to be sustained separate apart from Babylon. You know, that is exciting news to hear. You know, I think it is high time we start of being the, all the councils of God's prophet. We, many of us have heard about the health message and there is much interest in the health message, but the health message even goes far beyond eating right. The prophet of the Lord said in the book, Councils and Diets and Foods, that Seventh-day Adventists are not to believe that they are supposed to be dependent on the food resources that come in from the United States of America. Because she says that the taxes and duties will become so high that the food will be so expensive that the poorest among us will not be able to afford the basic essentials for good health and sustenance. You know, so she says Seventh-day Adventists in the same book, she says Seventh-day Adventists are supposed to be um, producers and not consumers only. And I've never heard that aspect of the health message promoted as much as how we eat. But it is a full system that God designed. It is a comprehensive blueprint that God has. So while it is good that we should be eating right, the prophet of the Lord says that we should be the providers of the food resources as well. She says that the health food work is God's modern manner. So Brother Terry has said that we are going soon into a new wilderness experience. And the wilderness ex experience demanded that there would be manner. And she said, our prophet said, Sister White said, that the health food work is God's modern manner. So the health food factories have to be a serious consideration in going forward because that is the modern manner that he provided our health foods. And we have a, a, a myriad of food resources locally. 
where we can utilize them, um, make value added products from our bananas, from our apples, from our oranges, you know, from our guavas. We, that should be where we are thinking now. Not only would you be providing food resources, but you would actually be bolstering the economy of not only Seventh-day Adventism, but the wider Jamaica and creating jobs. You know, so truly we would fulfill the mandate when people see us doing all of these great enterprises. People would actually remark, they will actually remark, who are these wise and understanding people? That is God's um, priority for his people. That is what he desires to see happen. That is his purpose for us. And I believe it is high time that we achieve this through the righteousness of Christ, through the merits of Christ, and through the power of Christ. So this is one of the main ambitions of Steps to Light Ministry, not to only preach the gospel in terms of the spoken word, but to carry the gospel in its holistic sense, because that is the exact way Christ carried the gospel. So thank you for your time, and thank you for inviting me to be a part of this experience. Um, amen. Amen. Um, Yes, over to you. Um, just a little uh, moment, Brother Antonio. So we want to thank Brother Wazari Johnson for presenting so eloquently. My my heart just moved, my spirit moved when he when he you know when he talked about the refrigerator. It just bring me to the future when we won't be probably having electricity and like the wild dances, we don't know where we would. So I'm just so happy that. He mentioned Step to Light and, you know, Brother Antonio also is a part of that ministry and he's going to speak to us in a little while. But we want you to check out these ministries, Brother Noel ministry, Brother Wazari. And we also want you, Jamaica, to wake up and join this religious economic um, uh, train that Brother Noel and Brother Wazari um, is speaking about because soon and very soon we won't be able to buy ourselves so let's use what we have it's time to use the land that we have it's time to use our ideas and pull together and create a seven-day adventist economy all right over to you now brother antonio well good morning huh? so i see you. are you hearing me Is my audio good huh? excellent yeah. you know um I just want to add the icing on the cake, if I may, or, you know, I'll, I'll see more parts of the cake. You know, we, we have come to a day and age, as the Bible says, for every time there's a season under the sun, and we're not we're at the end of, of, of time, you know, we're approaching the end of time. And, you know, as we approach the end of time, there is need, there is need for a broader scope, a higher aim in terms of how we address religion or how we conduct religion. In terms of, you know, for me, I have been stuck with preaching the word, and that's good. The Bible says that when Christ was on earth, that he not only ministered, he not, he not only preached um, in a synagogue, but he went about teaching, healing, and polishing, and in all manner of practical work. And there is indeed far more practical aspect of Christianity to be involved. I think the world is tired of hearing persons preaching. But I'm sure that if you were help, if you help try to become un, somebody who was unemployed, you to become employed. If somebody who didn't have a source of income or didn't have food on the table, you help them. I'm sure they'll be more receptive in receiving that gospel message. And you know, it's interesting as we go back to the first Exodus, because the concept is use what you have or use what's in your hand, or as God says, Moses, what's in your hand. That concept is uh, use the resources that you have around you. And the question we need to ask ourselves is uh, as we go back to biblical times, uh, or we go back to the book of Exodus, uh, when God called the children of Israel out of Exodus, uh, was it God's purpose uh, for when they need to be, they need to be uh, educated? Uh, or was it God's purpose after them coming to Egypt uh, for them to go back to the school that to, to, to get the education? Uh, Always have their own separate universities and schools. Uh. When they came out of Egypt uh, and, and somebody came down with a sickness, uh, was it God's plan for them to go back to the Egypt and have a system uh, so that they could receive a healthcare system? Uh, or was it God's plan for them to establish their own science system in the wilderness? Uh? We, we need to ask ourselves a question if we are coming to a day and age when all earth, when all earth support will be cut off. Uh, is it not freedom for us to have our own science theorems? 
for us to have our own food factories, for us to have our own educational system. Because if you come to a day and age where um, we can buy ourselves, it's not, it's not experience for us to have our own system where we can trade among ourselves, where we can buy ourselves among ourselves. So when that time comes, we can say, hey, we have our own system, so your system won't affect us. You know, well, I'm a major fan of, of religious liberty, and I, 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 and I champion that. And it is sad that many of us are being, becoming unemployed because of the own vaccine issue. Um, but as, as God says, higher than, high, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts, and my ways are higher than your ways. So while, while we are interested in getting religious exemption letters, we should also just we should also be just as interested in seeking to make our own employment. Because if we were employers instead of employees, if we had our own business, nobody could tell us, hey, you need this job because they're not vaccinated. We 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 we, we were the one employing people. So there comes a time when we have to be the head and until we have to start building our own institutions. Because if we were if we were own doctors, if we had our own institutions, Nobody could, could say, hey, leave this job, take this job, or leave this job. We would say, no, thank you, because we're the one in charge of our institutions. So, um, as that time comes, uh, as we draw near to the end of time, the concept of user have is a concept that should be applied to individual countries, uh, because we're told that we should not be depending upon imported foods from America. Each country, God has given their own set of materials. Each country has their own unique curves. So, you know, one issue that we're facing, especially in the Caribbean, is a, is a high imported prices. We have been importing health products and many other products that could have been manufactured in, in, our, con in our own country. And these w would have been sold at a lower price. But because we are constantly importing, importing stuff from overseas, the prices are exorbitant. And, and, and sadly, the poorest among us uh, can afford these prices. Uh, it is not God's wisdom. Uh, it is not God's plan that the poor should be left behind. It is God's plan that every man should have access to the resources that he has provided upon this earth. Every man should have access to good and proper health. Every man should have access to a proper education. Uh, so, as the concept is use, use what you have, we just start using the resources that each country have. Uh, the Caribbean has a unique set of herbs uh, which many of us have forgotten. Uh, you know, many of us, you know, oftentimes we talk about Caribbean, we talk about herbs from America or herbs from China. But what about the herbs that's in your backyard? Uh? So we should acquaint ourselves with the resources that we have. Uh, and the same goes for, for the other nations. Uh, you know, it's good that we can import things, but it's even better yet that we can have industries uh, in our own countries. So that we can lower the, um, the driving factors uh, of some of the costly things that we need, some of the amenities that we need in life uh, can actually be lowered. We do not pay high prices for products like soap, uh, for products like rice, uh, grains or corns, uh, or certain fruits, uh, when we can manufacture and raise and grow these things in our own backyards, in our own countries. Uh. So economically, it's good. Uh, it's good that we can preach the word, but even better, because good religion is also in a low farm bread. Good religion is also teaching people how to farm what they eat and eat what they grow. Good religion also is, is, is teaching people how they can be their own doctors, that they do not call in a lawyer as soon as they will call a doctor. Good religion is teaching people how to become self-sufficient, because we are coming to a day and age where, you know, many sisters, we have come to a day and age especially in the hospital system, that we're told that persons who are coronavirus, their family members could not treat them. But what if these persons had knowledge, the simple use of drugs, the simple use of hydrotherapy um, that could be effective in treating COVID-19, the simple use of in inhalations, what if persons were actually being taught these things? How much lower could, how could our debt rate be? The simple use of a plant-based diet which many studies, such as the British Medical Journal, have been shown the efficacy of simple things around us. So if we can teach people, you know, you know, to be more self-reliant, well, not more self-reliant, but more God-reliant, and more involved in the eight laws of health, more involved in, in country living, because the issue right now is that many foods, 
We will, we will be the ones to find those last and that's on supermarket shelf. As, as Brother Rifle said, COVID-19 is actually a wake-up call. COVID-19 is actually God sent us say it's time for it's time for you to come out of Babylon, not just theoretically, but practically. It's time for you to leave, leave the educational system of Babylon. It's time for you to leave the, the, the medical system of Babylon. It's time for you to separate from Babylon and actually actually raise up your own food factories, actually raise up your own science team, actually raise up your own educational system. Let, let, let us not let us not have another pandemic or another crisis find us unprepared. It is time for us to use what we have as God's people. And I will end up on that note. Amen. Um, Brother Antonio just, um, he's just, just repeating the same wavelength. I saw Brother Noel nodding and smiling. I was even raising my hand because it's the same message that God has placed upon our hearts. And we came together and we want to say to all our Jamaicans starting a yard. Um, of course, within our Seventh-day Adventist churches and us as Jamaicans to use what you have. And for those, my friends, who are from other countries and don't understand what use what you have, it is a Jamaican terminology which says use what you have to create what you don't have. So, for example, if you have soil, if you have a little spot of land, use it to grow something. If you have ideas, pull together with some someone and put your ideas together if you can grow a plant a fruit tree and you can do canning and teach other people in the community to do canning just as joseph was sent to egypt to prepare for the famine that was coming god is raising up this group use what you have to point jamaicans to use what you have to create what you don't have and we hope that this fire would ignite in the rest of the caribbean and the rest of the world Let let us come to God and ask him, give us the wisdom to use what we have. I'm going to turn over now to Brother Paul Riley. Brother Paul, are you there? Yes, I am. I will um, <clears throat> proceed. Okay, all right. We have several ministries that we would like to speak about, but I will just introduce them to us today. Um, one of the first ministries that I did in returning from the United States in 2013 is the herbal book called In My Backyard. And since that time, we were able to publish In My Backyard Part 1, In My Backyard Part 2, that deals with Jamaican herbs and their healing benefits and other uses. We also created another book called Wellness Secrets. Wellness Secrets um, deals with this. Brother Paul, are you still there? I think we're having a little bit of a technological glitch. All right, so in the meantime, while Brother Paul is um, sorting out his, you know, I just wanted to go back to, um, to what Brother Antonio was saying. Brother Paul, are you back now? I'm going to have to switch to my phone. Okay, sure, sure, yes. All right, while well, Brother you? Paul, okay, okay. Okay, great. So we have um, Wellness Secrets, which is a spiritual foundation of our health message, together with other special plants that we have. And then we have um, the cookbook called Total Vegetarian Cookbook that contains recipes that are local utilizing cassava and um, potatoes and plantains and ripe bananas and bananas and all different type of Jamaican foods, you know, showing that vegetarian food can be without imports from the United States and Europe. And finally, we have another one called Simple Remedies that shows us how to use uh, Epsom salt and 
charcoal and hydrotherapy showing how we can do those in the comforts of our simple homes. And um, lately, um, having gotten married, my wife um, had the burden of establishing a school. And so we established the Riversdale Training Institute, which is an online school. And we had students from Trinidad, Canada, um, the Cayman Islands, Belize. And now we are located in Belize. We've moved to Belize, where we continue the training as well. And uh, most recently, Brother Terrier, um, being moved by the Holy Spirit, um, engaged my services. And the Lord prepared me to um, fulfill the duty that he laid upon me by giving me another skill in the building of apps. So we have that mobile app now available where different businesses and all different types of works and skills amongst God's people can be showcased on our own platform and the means of making communication and of collaborating with all these ministries. God bless you. I have so much more to share, but I'm so overwhelmed by the moving of the Holy Spirit. This morning, in the messages that has been given, in the team that he has so quickly assembled, though we are at different locations and I can see the hand of God and I know that you is what you have and steps to light and all the other ministries that will be spoken of will be the means through which God's people will triumph mm -hmm. over the wicked one. And we shall stand one day on the sea of glass, victory over the beast, victory over his mark, victory over the number of his name. We look forward to that great celebration day. God bless you. Amen. That was just so sweet and to the point. And for those of you who want to reach out to Paul, Brother Paul, I'm going to ask you to probably answer because maybe someone might be watching presently or in the future. How can they get hold of um, in my backyard about the Jamaican herbs that we have? I think you talk about the cookbook, Total Vegetarian, Simple Remedies and part of your school. How can they reach you? Okay, we you can reach me um, via the internet. Um, we have website. We have riversdale.io. That is simply r i v e r s d a l e dot i o. Um, our phone numbers can be made available once you send a message to um, the meeting here, and we have. Um, a representative in Jamaica. We have several representatives in Jamaica because the car porters within Jamaica, um, many of them carry the book. So wherever you're located in Jamaica, it's very convenient for you to contact your car porter that you know, and they may have the book to give you. Wherever in the world you are, you can go on the site and we can ship it to you. So that's one of the more prominent means that we're currently using. And we're also on Facebook and on WhatsApp as well. If you type natural backyard, you will see the In My Backyard books. Facebook.com slash natural backyard. All right, thank you so much, Brother Paul Riley. So that's natural backyard, N-A-T-U-R-A-L-B-A-C-K, Y-A-R-D, Natural Backyard. And you can find the Jamaican herbs, um, the wellness secrets, the book, the cookbook, Total Vegetarian. So it's possible to be a vegetarian even in Jamaica, all right? Simple Remedies and his online school if you want more information about that. So we've heard from all our presenters today and today's our first meeting of Use What You Have. And we are planning to continue this and invite people to be on the platform because we want to teach people to be self-supporting, sustained by Jehovah, of course. But it's just a word that means that you start your own ministry and um, 
you know, you are creating jobs for others, you are creating for your family and so on. So at this time, I'm just going to give a few minutes to each presenter to just give a word of encouragement for those who are watching. So a Jamaican is watching and they're wondering, I don't know what I can do in this time because I've lost my job. We've spoken a little bit, but I just want you to give just a, a brief um, um, encouragement for those watching who probably have lost their jobs and now they're thinking what to do or those who don't have a job and they're wanting what to do. Could you give some encouragement for those people? And Brother Noel, I'll probably ask you first, then Brother Wazari, Brother Antonio, and then Brother Paul. Thank you, thank you, Sister Gabrielle. Okay, for Jamaicans, I would want to tell you that the first thing to do is to start by fasting and prayer to the God of heaven, because he brings us into all truths. And God, not only is the source of our sustenance, but he's also the one who created us for specific purposes. The job that Elder Noel have may not be the same thing that Sister Gabriel has been used or will are, are been brought on this earth for. So we first need to go to God in fasting and prayer. Secondly, to avail ourselves of all resources, be open to the help of the Holy Spirit, to avail ourselves of all resources that is available. The, sometimes we do not need to reinvent the wheel. Sometimes there are persons and ministries across the length and breadth of the world that is dedicated to cause like this. And so we need to search the net, look for a niche that we can fit into underneath the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Um, those would be my two areas of pointers uh, in terms of moving forward. And of course, capitalize and use what you have. All right, thank you, Brother Noel. Brother Wazari, okay. Yes, um, Brother Noel is right in, in regards to prayer and fasting. And I would just add, believe God, trust God, exercise faith. You know, because righteousness is by faith. The Bible says that Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Not only did Abraham believe God and it was accounted to him for righteousness, but I look at the life of Abraham. And Abraham's life demonstrates that God's promises are more sure than what we can see tangibly. You know, he was in a place called Ur of the Chaldeans. And he was called out of Ur to go into this land of promise that was not established, never existed as it did later on. And he stepped out believing God. Today, we cannot find where Ur was located. There is no Ur of the Chaldeans on any map right now. But we can find Jerusalem. We can find Palestine. We can find the territory that God promised Abraham. So God's promises are more sure than what we can presently see. And we might not be in a job, and we might not um, see where we can step out of a secure job to go into an unknown. But when we exercise faith in what God has said, God's biddings are his enablings. And once he bids us to do something, he will provide the resources to make it possible to step out in faith and get what he has proclaimed done. You know, he is he, he puts that onus on himself to do it. You know, he binds himself with his own word. And God cannot lie, you know, because his word has creative power in it. And we have to go into that knowledge. We can't just depend on what we can see and, and feel and touch at all times. You know, we have to train our mind. We have to train our minds to know that when God speaks in that word only, is all the creative power necessary to accomplish what God has said. You know, we have to know that this is a reality because circumstances will present themselves to challenge you, to, to doubt, to, to want to turn back, to want to go back on the, the, the breasts of Babylon so you can be sustained by her milk. But God is calling us out and to separate from it. And if God is doing that, God has already provided the means where, whereby we can be sustained outside of Babylon. So we have to step out with faith. We have to trust God. 
Amen. Brother Antonio. Sure. Um, is the Ecclesiastic tells us that uh, when somebody press against you, that they may prevail, but two can withstand them, and three, the Bible says that a three four cord is not easily broken. You see, the issue that we are having in this text is that man was not created for isolation. The very first man, even in his perfection of wisdom, of beauty, of physical status, God said that it was not, it was not needful, or it was not even helpful for him for him to be alone. Therefore, God created for him a help meet. Now, God created for many of us different help needs. You help me, maybe a friend. You help me, maybe a family. You help me, maybe those around you. I mean, you know, God's given each of us different times. You know, your time might be cooking, but you may not have the, you may not have the flour. Somebody else who is your help meet may bring that flour. And that help me bring, may bring that water. So it's when we put together, when we realize that man was not created to, to, be, to be isolated atoms, but we're created to work together as a team. Unless you come together as a team, um, you know, we will not accomplish that great much. You know, we have come to at the end age where we decided to call ourselves great. But you know, there's great strength in unity. There's even great strength in numbers. So as we go forward, you know, ask among your friends. Your friend may be to be able to build a website. Somebody else may be able to, may, may be good in business administration. Somebody else may be maybe a good secretary or maybe a good accountant. You may be a good chef. You may be a good designer. Put together your resources and come together and build a business so that you can can to give back and not only to the, the economic of the country but, but also to do to those around your community. So uh, my final comment is to press together, press together your resources, press together your intellectual achievements, press together. Let, let's not compete against each other, but let one brother, one not brother's hand, let one brother add had it. Add it's time for another brother. You know, let's come together and, and let's move this world in a way that's marvelous. Because, you know, if it was Christ alone, um, he could have accomplished this bit. Even the greatest, even the greatest, even the greatest man who walked this world needed 12 other men to assist him. So, um, and, and that was God in the flesh. If God needs assistance, what about us, finite, limited beings? How much more do you rely upon the resources, strength, and intellect of those around us? Even the wisest man, poor man, need, needed persons to assist him. So we today, at the end of time, we accomplish little better if we don't have the, if we don't have the, have the help. And we accomplish greater if we, if we come together and, you know, pull our resources together and pull our things together. So, um, um, this is, um, you see, you see the concept of come together, press together, press together. And that, those are my final words. Yeah? All right. Amen, Brother Antonio. It is true. You know, God is asking us to improve on the talents that we have. Let us not be like that slothful servant who went and buried his talents. But let us ask God, as Brother Noel says, by prayer and fasting and help you know, so that he can help us improve on what we have. All right, Brother Paul is going to um, speak now. Um, so the question, in case you guys are just joining us, uh, we are asking, you know, many people are out of jobs or people do not have a job. And based on what use, what you, what you have is a ministry. Could you give some words of encouragement to those who are watching? Brother Paul. Okay. My final few words to us is to utilize the app and start allowing it to work for you. If you are currently without employment, if you have a skill that you want to let the world know about it, if you have a need, because it's for everyone from either side. If I have a house and I need someone to cut my lawn, I could actually type into the app, I need someone to cut my lawn. And the price you will get, you know, for cutting it is 4,000 Jamaican dollars. All of that capability is there within the app. So start using it and let us see the impact, the positive impact 
that will start to take place in the lives of God's people. Because we have what we need. It is just for us to start using it. God bless you. Looking forward to interacting with you on this level. God bless you. All right. Amen, Brother Paul. And, you know, that will be our final encouragement to you, Jamaican. So if you have an Android phone, you can download the app. But Paul, could you just tell us a little bit before you go about how people can get access to the app? Use what you have. Use what you have. Sorry. OK, perfect. Um, for those with Android phones, the app is available in the Google Play Store. So all you would need to do is to just click on the Google Play Store um, icon on your phone, and then it will open up, and you will just type into the search bar, use what you have. So you just type in U-Z-E space W-A-H space A-V, and it will come up. And all you need to do is to install it on your phone, sign in, and then you can start using it. As for those with um, Apple devices, iPhones and Mac devices, you can access it via the web. So you need a special link. And um, once you click on it, you can utilize it as if it's an app. You know, you have all the capabilities just as if you're using the app. So. These links, once you send us a message, we can forward it to you or we can place it on Facebook and other places. Once you click, there you go. All right, thank you, Brother Paul. And I'm gonna be, I've been moderating the chat on Facebook as, as I have been uh, doing this. Um, Brother Antonio, maybe you could also help me. It's at Radical Faith today. I'm not sure, but I've been trying to interact and I saw Brother Pete O'Connor, um, he's over there in USA, and I see Brother Christopher Wellington tuning in on our Facebook page, and they've been commenting um, on the Facebook page, interacting. So welcome to you guys, and for those of you who will be watching the rebroadcast, not the live broadcast, I'm going to be putting that link for those who have Apple devices like myself, where you can access this app. So if you're without a job, as Brother Paul says, or if you're if you have job to provide for fellow Jamaicans, you just type, go to the app and you get that. So we wanna start with this um, app and let, let's see how we can create that economy for each other as we see the, we're living in the last days. We won't be able to buy or sell in a few days. And you know, Noah preached for 120 years. He didn't wait until it started raining. He was making preparation. And right now we are making preparation. All right, so um, is there any final thoughts? We're gonna have in closing a, a, um, a testimony from Brother Noel, but I just wanted to give each person, before we do, I'm going to play a video, um, the promo video for this, because since I came here in Jamaica in July, I came to Jamaica, I'm from North Carolina, July 29th, and I have planted a pumpkin from the seed. So guys, if you're cooking, don't just throw your pumpkin seed in the trash. Don't just throw your, um, your carrots in the trash. Cut off the top of your carrot. And if you don't know how to do it, guys, you know, the internet is there. You can go to the internet and find out how can I grow um, carrot or how can I grow tomato? I've grown tomato just from the seeds um, from cooking in my... In, in Um, so just try not to throw away these things in the trash, use them. So we're going to play a video and then we're going to come back and each person is going to give a final, um, thoughts, their final thoughts. And then we're going to end, we're coming to the close. We're going to end with brother Noel, Noel, um, giving us a testimony. All right. And then, okay. I'll probably swap it around. I'm going to ask brother Noel to share his testimony and then each of us will give, our closing remarks and that will take us to the end but we will be back guys this is just the beginning guys this is just the beginning so join me now as we share our promo uh video what i have been doing here and yeah so and for those of you who are watching yes thank you brother antonio for the 
um, for the reminder. Those of you who are watching, if you have any question, we are also going to be taking questions also. So I'm going to play the video or promo video, and then you can think of your question, put them in the chat, and we will be um, answering those if you have any question um, for us, or if you want to share something that would benefit someone else. So, all right, let's watch the promo video. Hi, I'm Gabrielle. I live in a housing scheme and I use the land for Kalaloo. For tomatoes. For pumpkin. For leaf of life. And peppermint. Use what you have. All right, guys, um, I think you have, you're, you were able to view that promo video. So, you know, just using the soil to create something to eat could be a start. Guys, you don't have to start big. And that's what we want to let you guys know. Just from your little carrot, just from a little tomato, um, a little pumpkin, you know, and pray as Brother Noel says, pray in your ha heart and ask God how you can link up with others so we can create that um, religio economic because it's coming friends the time of no buying and selling is coming all right over to you brother Noel to share your testimony and then we're going to have closing thoughts from everyone and friends we are going to see you next time okay thank you so much sister Gabriel I did have some requests from friends here in Jamaica too who has been texting me and telling me that they are looking at the program and they want it to, to, be, to be connected. Um, they are quite in, you know, enthused by what they're seeing. But I just want to share for a few uh, short moments on uh, Temple Foods and its inception and just to give some encouragement to those who may have been thrown out of work. Uh, when I became a Seventh-day Adventist, I literally knew of the health message on my back been sick. I was involved in the processing of uh, confectionery or uh, the making of sugar related um, candies. And um, it brought me a good uh, source of income. But then I became a Seventh day Adventist and I got healed within seven days after my baptism. And I was then sick for approximately three years, maybe 14 surgeries I actually underwent. At the age of 21, I probably, you know, big, well, I was diagnosed with an illness that is only for old men, which is a prostatic related disorder. And, um, you know, in, in, while I was there on my back, God led me to the book, The Story of Our Health Methods by D.E. Robinson. And uh, I determined that the way that I earned my income uh, should not continue because there is no way that I should make an income from something that is destroying the health of someone else. And so I prayed to the Lord. Uh, as there was months of prayer and fasting. And God then led me into his word as Brother Wazeri had said earlier on. And it was in the study of the sanctuary message that God gave me the answer. Because then, uh, you know, God works with us and our uniqueness. And while studying the sanctuary, I discovered that um, the poor that was a part of the, the congregation of Israel um, could take, rather than taking a turtle dove or something, could take a handful of meal and uh, a handful of wheat, so to speak, as his offering. And um, I did some further studies and based on my background in food technology, I studied, I found out that this was actually whole wheat and the way that the Lord instructed the preparation of it would have been essentially whole wheat flour. But not only that, the Lord also gave a recipe and as I followed it, I realized that this would have been vulgar wheat um, in essence because it would be cracked and roasted. 
And so I went to the Lord and I said, okay, Lord, it would appear that what you're doing is to direct me to use these products that if the poor could offer it, then you would also accept it from a poor because that by then I'd use up all my resources searching to an alternative for work. So I said, obviously, Lord, you will accept this as an offering, but where do I get the raw materials? And while they're praying one day and fasting, I heard a knock. Just as I questioned the Lord, I heard a knock on my business place. And I went out, and there was a young man, and he, he had two parcels in his hand. They were about 25 pounds each. And he said to me, I felt impressed to come here today. I want to know if you have use for these things. And I said, what are they? He said, this is all wheat flour and this is wheat. I, I am an employee of the Jamaica flour mills and um, I can get these things at below cost. Um, I can get them for you. Do you have an interest in them? I said, of course, this is your answer to my prayers. And that started the relationship, not only with the Jamaica flour mill, but over the next ensuing years, literally transformed the Jamaican landscape. We, we were the first persons in this country to produce bulgur wheat and to sell it across the length and breadth of Jamaica. And then we, we got other players online. And so all and most of the other local processors that today exist, they existed literally out of Temple Foods. And that is why we have Temple Foods today. So I'm saying, take heart. God is in control. Whatever your circumstances are, if God could place me on my back to learn the message, that in the end could be able to benefit so many others, God is, may have taken you out of a job in order for you to get onto his job to do his bidding. Thank you. All right, praise the Lord for that powerful testimony. You know, this just encouraged me more and more. And I hope it is doing the same for you. I see Brother Wazari in the chat just saying, Amen, praise God. And for those who are uh, watching online, I see um, there's also another brother I know from over there in Portland, Brother Martin Turgot. He just um, joined us a few uh, minutes ago and I was like answering and mon monitoring the, the chat as he joins. So we just want to say welcome to those of you who have joined us online or who will be watching this rebroadcast. All right, so at this time, I'm just going to give probably just a minute or so to each person to just share a minute to two minutes to share your final thoughts with us and then we will close. Well, um, I think we have gotten a, a mind full of, of information today. You know, it, it has been glorious, believe me. Uh, all we have to do now is trust the Lord and go forward in his might. You know, we, 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 we know God has done the work already, has already provided resources. What we have to do is step now out into the Jordan, you know. He has already parted the Red Sea and bid, and bid us to cross over, but there comes a point now where we will have to step into the Jordan before it is parted. So um, I, I am so blessed by what I just heard about the beginnings of Temple Foods, you know, and it is just evident that God is about to do something great, and I am excited, and I encourage us all to just not lose focus and hold onto God's hand and step into the unknown, trusting that he's going to do great things in a short while. He will be doing some real great things, especially for the island of Jamaica. You know, I, I, I see Jamaica as a catalyst for many great things. That is, that is the way I look at Jamaica. It is the island that I've come across in the spirit of prophecy that, um, the, the servant of the Lord, our prophet Sister White, says that it is ideal for medical missionary work. And National Geographic said, said that not since the Isle of Crete 
has one single small island influenced the world. You know, so Jamaica is the next island since Crete that has had this kind of influence as a little island upon the world. We are influencers. And if we turn our strength toward doing good, we can be a great influence for good as a small island. And I will just encourage us to be a part of that process of being an influence for good. All right, thank you, Brother Wazari. Okay, Brother Paul, you can go ahead, your final thoughts. Okay, um, can you see my screen? Yes. Um, okay. yes. Okay, perfect. Yes. This is a short snippet of the app. We're hearing a feedback, Brother Paul. Okay. Okay. Is it clear now? Okay, is it clear now? Yes. Okay, perfect. So these are some of the businesses that are in Jamaica that have been um, placed upon the app. I'll just give an example of a farmer, Shirley Foster. She is one of the Portland farmers. You'd click, and there is a little detail about her, you know, what she has. We supply fruits to the market from our little farm. This is just an example, mangoes, avocados, naysberry. And right there, you can book an appointment with her, you know, just in case you want to, you know, get some of what she has. And you just click and then you put in a date that you'd want to um, have a talk with her and the time. Then you click submit request. When you do so, then you'll see this notification request submitted. Got it. So the other person now would actually see a notification on their phone, the farmer, and she will be able to confirm it. And so it will be scheduled. All right. And this is just one example of how the app works. Um, okay, let me show another snippet of it quickly. This is another side. This is a general picture of what you will see when you start up. You're gonna see this page that says use what you have and a few snippets. You will see here a video is about to play. Um, the use what you have promo, all right? And then there is a main menu you click on it, you see all these options. So you have the ASI, you have the classified. So if you have something to sell, this is what you would click. You click on this and then you go to classifieds. And once you do this, it will open up to innovative ideas and classifieds because this is where they are showcased. You click let's go. So these are some of the classifieds that are um, showing up here. So we have um, Islington SDA Youth Employment, something that they are doing there in Islington, St. Mary, and the details here, the type of venture, the packaging materials, and all that. So we can utilize this app for so many things, and it is very easy to use, very easy to use. Because when you start the app, if you have something to promote, you would simply come right here, at the front where there's this plus button. Once you click on it, it will give you a form and you just select your category if you don't find it coming in this drop down, because you have all these different things. So if you're a plumber, you can click plumbing. If you are um, into real estate, you can click that if you're a farmer. Well, and if you don't find your category here, you can easily click this button and place a new category that meets your needs. And then you put in your image, simply by clicking on the photo, it will open up the photo gallery on your phone, you upload that image. And then when you are through, you go to the bottom and you simply click submit. And there you go. You just click create service and it will be uploaded. So that's just a simple, illustration of what the app 
does and how it works. So again, our encouragement to us is obey the call of God. Use what you have, all right? And if you type in the information and you don't have an, um, an, a, a slot filled, you'll find this red box. At least put a letter in there and it will go through, all right? So that's just a small snippet of what the app is like. God bless you. All right. Thank you, Brother, was, uh, Brother Paul Riley, for showing us how the app works. So you guys get out your phones and start searching for this app and share, with, share it with others so that they can share their um, resources and as well as it's a two-way street. So you share your resources. If somebody needs the resources that you have, then they also can request. So thank you so much, Brother Paul. And Brother Wazari, any closing thoughts? Or did Brother Wazari go ahead? Who else is left? Was it Brother Antonio? Sorry. Um, yes. Are you hearing me? Yes, we can. Okay. You know, just two statements. Uh, and tell yourself to believe in the Lord, what God, uh, and so shall be established. Uh, believe in his prophets, uh, and so shall we prosper. We are told uh, higher than the highest human thought can reach. Uh, it's the highest human thought. Uh, um, is a thought of Isaac, Isaac Newton or, you know, um, Einstein or whatever the, whatever the highest human thought is. We're told that higher than the highest human thought can reach is God's ideas for his children. Godliness and God-likeness is the goal to be reached. So this call today is a call for the sum of higher, not only, not only in our Christian experience, but the sum of higher in presenting business aspects, so come up higher in our education, our team is more higher in all areas of our life because this work will not end with a less manifestation of the glory of God, but with a, but with a more manifestation of the glory of God. So our call is to come up higher, come up to that perfection, be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Perfect in our business aspect, perfect in our educational attainment, perfect in everything that we undertake, whatever, whatever, whatever our unfriend to do, let us do with all our might, because there is no more strength within that grave. Each of us has a distinct call of our life. Each of us has our part to play in our eternal son of God. And it's only for us to determine whether we will accept God's call for our life or we'll let that call in slide. So as we depart, I say depart and be well, be encouraged. Be strengthened you know, because God is coming again. You know? Amen. And I too want to just add my little bit. Um, thank you so much, Brother Antonio. And I'm just going to share my ministry page with you guys. It's called Radical Faith Today, which we're doing this program on. And I do, I have different playlists um, here. My latest interview was with James Hartley, he's the president of Light Ministry, and they train people to be health evangelists. So if you're interested in getting training as a medical missionary and you don't know how to go about it, check out some of my videos. Um, helping the homeless um, wildwood natural food market if you're living in the USA and you don't know where to get products from please check out this video and how you can get products sent right from um, Georgia so wildwood um, health institute of which I'm a student I did an entire video on the so check out that video if you want to see the tour of the entire natural food market there are spiritual things also prior power principles um, I also did like natural remedies brother Paul was with me last year too he did a presentation on natural remedies against COVID so we have like um, testimonies out of um, India about Adventism over there in India and how God is working in Mumbai, even an entire village converted to God. And these stories just, you know, when we turn on the TV and we see these negative news, it's always good to tune into some positive news. You know, hope through prophecy, uh, Brother Dustin Peslin and um, Red River Outpost, you know, I do inter interviews with them from South Africa, um, a pastor talking about the God of seeing and um, my friend here in Australia marrying the divine during a divorce. So are the 
dead really dead, staying strong in the midst of chaos, um, understanding the, you know, what keeps young people in the church and, um, you know, so, so many different topics. So, you know, go ahead and check out the sanctuary and judgment, not only in history, but in your life. So go over and um, check out Radical Faith today and also start your ministry and your, your own self-supporting ministry also. All right, Brother Noel, any closing thoughts? I am simply spellbound. I can only say trust God and live. My people, trust God and live. Thank you. All right, amen. All right, friends, thank you for joining. And if you missed the live, we encourage you to go back and watch this interview, watch these presentations. And this is not the first time we're going to be informing you of what we're going to be doing. So we're going to be praying together. And please pray with us as this committee plans together for our next presentation, which we're going to invite. We're going to open it up. So yes, you didn't get to join today because this is our first video. And so we're going to open it up for Jamaicans to join and we want to use brother Antonio you're going to have to help me and others we're going to use the hashtag use what you have so on your Facebook on your Instagram on your Twitter start by doing the hashtag use what you have and get people to join the use what you have train so I'm going to ask brother Antonio to do our closing prayer and then friends we're going to see you next time over to brother Antonio Sure, let's we'll pray. Dear Father, so we want to thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. We want to thank you for bringing us together because in unity there is strength. Lord, I ask that you may forgive us of where we have sinned, of where we have gone wrong. You know, forgive us, Lord, we are not exemplified your character. But most of all, Lord, I ask that you may strengthen our faith. May you encourage us, Lord, that you, that you Lord, has not left us without hope or status or to survive in these end times. And may, may as we, may as you're coming down here, may we have a closer walk with you. And most of all, Lord, may not be lost. May we all be found in your kingdom. This is my prayer. And this is my prayer. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you so much, Brother Noel, Brother Paul, Brother Wazari, and Brother Antonio for coming today and sharing on use what you have. Until next time, please keep us in your prayers as we keep you in ours. God bless. Bye-bye. Y'all can unmute now and say bye. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. 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 See you next time. I'm big up on the Jamaican. Use what you have. I am a Jamaican. Many people don't know that until I start to speak patwa. Use what you have. Jamaican, we are plead with enough. Use what you have. God bless you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs>